The proposed placement of sexually violent predator Douglas Badger into a Borrego Springs home is now on hold. At yesterday's status hearing, Judge Theodore Weathers paused the placement of 80-year-old Badger due to a situation that's playing out in Northern California courts. In Santa Cruz County, a woman opened a home school across the street from another proposed SVP placement. The question before an appeals court there is whether the home qualifies as a school. State law prohibits SVPs from being placed within a quarter mile of a school. Badger's proposed Borrego Springs address is also across the street from a home school. So joining us now to talk more about yesterday's hearing and how she's feeling about the situation as a resident of Borrego Springs is Terry Kellmeyer. Terry, good morning. Thanks for joining us again. Hi, Lauren. Thanks for having me. Were you in the courtroom yesterday for the hearing? No, I was not in the courtroom. In fact, we didn't even know it was happening until right at the very last minute. Um, we kind of got a text uh, chain going through the community and we heard that there was a hearing. So we were all quite surprised and really did not know what, what the hearing was about. We were actually hoping for a decision. Um, it's been a long time that we've been, we've been waiting and we were really hoping that we would actually have a decision yesterday. And I know Judge Weathers has also been the judge in the case uh, uh, of this SVP for his proposed placements in other neighborhoods that were rejected, uh, I, I believe in Helix and Rancho Bernardo. So you, were you a little bit more hopeful that this would be a different situation than what you saw with Michael Martinez, who is now living there in Borrego Springs? Yes, absolutely. You know, we were really um, happy to hear um, that Judge Weathers was going to be presiding over the case when we were, you know, originally got the news. Um, as you mentioned, he has rejected the placements a couple of times before due to, you know, children in the neighborhood and, you know, just no, no streetlights, dark sidewalks, all of that sort of thing, which certainly, uh, you know, is, is the case in Borrego Springs. Now, I know this, I mean, we've spoken about this before. I know you were hopeful that the case in Northern California was going to uh, obviously weigh in your favor for this Badger hearing. Um, this is all because of a, a home school, uh, which really state law was unclear on whether or not it qualified as a, a school in this case, which we're waiting on. Do we know any dates or any timeline as far as when that uh, Santa Cruz County Court could rule in that case? Yeah, we do. We They have until January 9th is what we've heard as far as when they need to make the ruling by. But again, we really don't have much information. Of course, we're we're hopeful um, that that the ruling is going to go in the way that, you know, it really should be. And I think the issue is that there's two different laws kind of conflicting or at play. There's the, the, the law about placement of SVPs that it can't be near a private or, uh, or public school. And then you have the California state laws that defines a homeschool as a as a private school. So there are two conflicting uh, laws and situations. So to have that be decided by a judge, you know, case by case, just does not make sense. It's truly the laws that need to be changed in order to make this a better situation. Yeah. I touched a little bit on the placement uh, that we had been following also back in July of SVP Michael Martinez. He has been placed in a home there in Borrego Springs. How is that going? Um, has there has there been issues with with that placement so far? Yeah, so it's you know it's very very much impacted our community. It's you know certainly impacted the residents of the street of the immediate neighbors. Um, there's a situation there again. There are many children on that street. There's an elderly woman that lives next door. You know, we don't know what the conditions are. We don't know if he is allowed to walk outside in his front yard or to walk down the street. It's incredibly difficult. I know we've had to call the sheriff multiple times um, just because we don't really know what he's allowed to do or not. Um, I ran into one of the moms on the street um, at a local store, and she told me that her son is terrified. I mean, he, you, you, to go to sleep at night knowing that there's a predator, a sexually violent predator, two doors down from you is, is just a, a nightmare to think about, and it's really impacting the mental health um, of our community.